I've heard it said that Christmas is a time for children. A time, I'm told, for magic. But who's to say? Is it magic or coincidence? Is it chance or something else? And sometimes, once in a long while, it is a time not just for children, but for everyone. I remember a Christmas not long ago, just like that, when something wondrous happened. Hello. Hello. What are you looking at, mister? I'm looking at a photograph. Who's in the photograph? Someone you don't know. Didn't your mama and papa ever tell you not to talk to strangers? Yes. Then why didn't you obey them? You shouldn't talk to strangers when you're all alone. I'm not. My brother's over there. Don't you think you ought to run along? Bye. Goodbye. You're nuts, Amanda. You gotta stop running up to people like that. You're gonna run into some weirdo someday. who will grab you and cut you into little pieces. I just like the look of that old man. He looks like someone I should know. Yeah, sure. Come on. Though the frost was cruel, when a poor man came in sight, gathering winter fuel. Oh, we have to love joviality. It's Christmas after all. Finally, finally, we come to that pillar of efficiency. The man who would never make a move without drawing up six lists and eight schedules. The master of cost improvement. Our own Attila the Hun and district manager rolled into one Reginald E. Spencer. Whoa. Come and get your gift from Santa Claus. Thank you very much, Santa. And uh, thank you, slave. May I open this? Please do. For goodness sake, just rip it open. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Open. You're all fired. <laughs> uh, I've always wanted one of these. I really have. I wouldn't give it a try. Uh, would you like to get in? You're going to promise me to stay away from here till January the 2nd. Maybe. No maybe about it. A burnt out slave driver is no good to anyone, at least the poor me. Okay, Michael, you're the boss. So get out of here. And have a good Christmas. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. 
Reg, don't forget the little token of our appreciation. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry a problem with that dumb name. It's not a dumb name. Muffy, give me a break. It's a good thing I didn't let you name the kids. <laughs> give up. You're beaten. Oh, you can say that again. Bad day? Was the party a disaster? No, the party was fine. Oh, uh, they, uh, they gave me this. Could be handy. I tried it. It doesn't work. I caught some jerk breaking into the car. Stole the phone, made a real sweet mess. I call the police? Oh, yeah, but they'll never get him. He's gone. Hi, Dad. Hi, Amanda. What did the boys do this time? They're using Frick for target practice. That's bad. I can handle it. If they're just boys. Oscar, how are you? Good, huh? You knock off a bank or something? No, no such luck. I forgot the combination of the <laughs> safe. <laughs> but I was passing a, a very dark alley, and in that alley was an automobile. And somehow my hand got wrapped around a, a phone that was in the car. What do you know? It was loose. It was worth 1500 bucks. I took it to a big-hearted loop. You know what he gave me? 125 bucks. Hmm. How's Marie? Yeah, she's still on tour. Poor old flake. I want to go over and see her. Thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily, and yet wouldst wrongly would win. Marie. Elmer, I'm so glad you're here. Elmer, my son is coming to get me this evening. We are vacationing on the old guard. It's very nice. I, um, uh, I brought you this scarf. You look so pretty on it. Thank you. Thank you, Elmer. We fail, but screw your courage to the sticking place and we'll not. When Duncan is asleep. 
Mark! Get your hand out of that bag or I'll break your rod. Hey, take it easy. I mean it! Go on, keep the gloves. Help your arthritis while you're at it here. Give this 20 to Wally. The medicine instead of that crud he's been taking. And be sure the 20 is used for the medicine. And you make sure that you give it to him. Okay. All right, come on. Sid? Yo. A hat for you. And then he disappeared down the street. Telephone and all. You know, for an old guy, he really could move it. Well, anyway, it's no real harm done. Well, yeah, except he kind of chewed up the car. So we'll get it fixed. The insurance will cover it. You did call it in. I'll call it in tomorrow. You know, you'd think that old creep could have at least given it a break for Christmas. Maybe Christmas is the problem. Hey, what's that mean? John wants me to do an article on how the destitute survive Christmas. I've been wondering what you do if you're homeless and penniless and it's Christmas. Barb, for Pete's sake, the guy ripped me off. Who ripped you off, Dad? Oh, uh, just an old man. Nothing to worry about. Amanda, stop playing with your food and eat something. You know what? I think I'll go into the office myself tomorrow and work out that claim. Aren't you forgetting something? What? Oh, yeah, the shopping thing. Well, look, we can do that another time. Uh, this is more important. You guys understand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's settled then. Uh, what's for dessert? <sighs> Beats me. Oh. Oh, come on, Justin. Let's see what we can find. Okay. Mommy? Hmm? Do you know anyone who doesn't have a home or anything? No. I don't think so. I think I do. For a young guy, this guy could really move it. So, uh, so what? How much did you get for it? Enough. Enough for everyone and for Christmas. That's if your tastes don't get too extravagant. Amanda, how many times have I told you not to talk to people like that? I know, Mommy. I know I shouldn't. But I've seen them there before. Anyways, Justin was there. What makes you think he's got no home? I don't know. But he always just sits by himself. Well, maybe he's just the sort of person I should talk to when I do my article. Think you could find him again?
I'm really scared, Mandy. Justin? What? Do you think we'll ever get to see Santa? I don't think Dad understands how important it is. I think we will. You will. You just gotta keep bugging Dad. That's all. You're really good at that. Give me a break, Justin. I sure hope we get to see him. Court, take it easy. Come on, let's get Grandpa in the house and give him a cup of coffee. It's a long drive. Yeah, Dad, come on in. Okay. Right after that, Courtney and I are heading out. We've got places to go and things to see, right, Chow? Right, Grandpa. Hey, Grandpa, can my friends come too? Oh, now, Court, I don't think that your Grandpa wants to be taken. Oh, the more the merrier. As long as it's all right with their Mom and Dad. Sticks his head in, throws a fit because I promised I wouldn't be back until after New Year's. And? And? Uh, and he throws me out of the office and I didn't get cleaned on. What? And he throws me out of the office. And I didn't get the claim done. Which is why you went down there in the first place. Yeah. And to duck out of the trip to see Santa. Hi, Arch. How are you? Well, I think the four of us are safe and sound. I'm pretty well stuffed. Guess I don't have to ask if the kids enjoyed themselves. How about you? We all had a great time. Uh, look, Arch, uh, thanks a lot for looking after the kids this afternoon. <laughs> like I said, no problem. Nice kids. Bye now. Bye. You are a rat. Now, what are you talking about? What did I do? Nothing, and that's the trouble. That nice old man did it for you. Okay, okay, I'm guilty. Uh, look, uh, what if on Monday we all go shopping? You, me, the kids, all of us, we'll, we'll make a day of it. My, my guilty conscience won't achieve. You're on. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mandy. Why aren't you asleep? Junk. No, I'm just thinking. Oh, I see. Want to talk about it? Archie's Courtney's grandpa, right? That's right. Did you have a good time with him? Yeah, I did. So what's the problem then? How did Courtney get a grandpa? Archie is Mrs. Whitney's father. That's how. You told me once Dad's father died a long time ago. Yes, that's right. Why don't you have a dad? Because if you did, I'd have a grandpa, wouldn't I? Yes, that's true. <laughs> it's a long story, Mandy. And I guess it's time I told you. 
see, when I was a little girl, my mom and dad went away somewhere, and they never came back. So I went to live with some other people, what they call the children's aid. But why didn't they come back? I don't know, Mandy. I've never known. I wish I did. Sometimes there are things that we can never know. Didn't they love you? Oh, I hope they did, Mandy. I hope they did. Don't cry, Mom. It's okay. Oh. It wasn't all that bad. I met a lot of rather nice people. But you know what? I wish you had a grandpa, too. Mom? I think we should adopt a grandpa, don't you? I don't think I handled that too well. Why not? Look at me. Your daughter knows that her mother's humor. Is that a problem? I guess we really are two birds of a feather. Justin. Justin. Yeah? What are you thinking about? I don't know. I guess I was thinking about Courtney's grandpa. Me too. He sure was nice, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, grandpas are supposed to be like that. Were you just talking to Mom? Yes. What about? Woman stuff. Justin? Yeah? You know what I think Mommy would really like? What? If we had a grandpa. You think so? I'm gonna ask Santa for one. Don't be dumb, Amanda. It's not dumb. I'm more else for anything else, just a grandpa. You sure it's the same man? I'm sure. And you're sure he's friendly? Well, he's not too friendly. But he's not mean. Come on, Mandy. Let's go. you again. I brought my mom. You brought you? Oh, that's just great. <coughs> she wants to talk to you. About what? I was just wondering if you'd mind talking to me about what you do. Huh? For Christmas, I mean. I'm Barb Spencer, Amanda's mother. I figured as much. I'm a journalist. I'm doing a story on the unfortunate and how they deal with Christmas. The unfortunate? What makes you think that I'm unfortunate? Well, would you show us your picture? No. Why won't you talk to my mommy? I've decided you're my friend, and I think you should talk to her. Shouldn't you get Justin to help you with some of that? Uh, yeah. I uh, suggested something of the kind, but he strangely disappeared. Aliens, I think. So where have you two been? We went down to Allen Gardens. I showed Mommy my new friend. What new friend's that? Um, there's this old man she's made friends with. 
Amanda, how many times have I told it's you? It's okay, Reg. I was worried at first, but he's okay. In fact, he's wonderful. He lives down in some weird old place on the lake with these other acquaintances of his. They all kind of take care of each other. Except from the sounds of it, this old character, his name is Elmer, is most of the taking care. Like me, you mean? Real. Like if you cook one night out of ten. Hey, what we're dealing with here is uh, quality, not mere quantity. Shut up and stir. Anyway, I think it's really great that they all sort of gather together like a family that they wouldn't otherwise have. But it still sounds pretty bleak. Some nights there's nothing to eat at all. There's never any heat. Yet somehow they survive, even at Christmas. I asked him what he did for money, and he hinted he occasionally gets up to some vaguely nasty things. I'll bet he's a petty thief. So he spent the afternoon talking to a petty thief who's made friends with our daughter. I'm telling you, this guy is all right, more or less. Anyway, sounds like you got a good article started. Yeah, pretty good. So, y'all set for tomorrow? What do you mean? You're not trying to back out of it again. What? The shopping trip. We'll make a day of it. No. 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 Fine. You hadn't forgotten. Me? Yeah. Okay, first of all, Amanda, you come with me. Justin, you go with your mother. We'll give that 55 minutes to meet back here at 1222. We can talk about five minutes and then we'll switch. Come on, Justin. That's to say that Justin's... Come on, Dad. Swipe my car. Is this true? Did you break into my husband's car? 
I said, did you break into my husband's car? Well, maybe I did. Maybe I did? That's not good enough. Is it true? Did you do it? Yes, I did. You should be ashamed of yourself. Now you apologize. What? Go on, apologize. Barb, what is this? I'm calling a cop. No, Daddy, don't call the police. That's... Amanda's right. You're doing no such thing. Homer, apologize. Barb, be serious. He's a thief. Rich, you be serious. If you call a cop, where's Elmer going to spend Christmas? Well, I don't know. Jail, I guess. Exactly. You want that on your conscience? And who's going to help out back at the warehouse? The warehouse? Your office. Elmer, please apologize. Barb, who's going to make up the damage? Do you ever get around to making that claim? No, I did not get around to making the claim. Well, don't bother. Elmer can make it up himself. And just how's he gonna do that? He can work for it. He can work for you. Doing what? Odd jobs. Cleaning out the garage. You were just about killing yourself yesterday. There's lots of things he could help out with. Now, and when is all this supposed to happen? It can happen right now. And when he's worked off the value of the phone, well, he can stop. Simple. Is that okay with you? It's okay with me, lady. How about you? It's okay, Muffy. But, Daddy, what about the presents? I'll get them from the car later. Now, you kids go do something. What? I, I don't know. Go read a book or something. I don't want to read a book. Well, then watch some TV. There's nothing on. Look, just beat it, okay? Are you and Mom going to have a fight? No, your mother and I are not going to have a fight. But, Daddy, I want to stay and talk to Elmer. I want to know if he's the one. Both of you, uh, off you go, okay? So, what's on your mind, Rich? I would like to have a word with you. In the kitchen. Now. Would you mind waiting right here? Guard him, Muffy. maniac or something and you're exposing your children to him oh. no don't say anything do you realize that, that old man in there is a common thief maybe worse he could be a serial killer he could very well cut all our throats in the middle of the night doesn't that sort of thing occur to you i just feel good about this guy i think he's in a spot he needs us to help him out Okay, Barb. Okay. But I want you to know one thing. This idea of him sleeping in the basement is absolutely nuts. If we all wake up dead in the morning, it's going to be on your head. Hello. All parables. You. Come with me.
You can sleep in here. I uh, think you'll find it comfortable. Reg, I just want to thank you for not having called the cops on me. And uh, I'll do anything I can to make it up to you for what I took. Well, thanks, Elmer. What happened, Mom? Is Dad really mad? No, no, everything's fine. Let's get you kids something to eat, and then it's off to bed for Bobby, okay? He's mad and he wants revenge. Don't miss revenge of the night. The fourth mutilated body this week, Inspector. Nobody knows where he'll strike next. Kiro's your ball. Ah. Oh. That looks okay. Yeah, I was uh, I was pretty hungry, so I I guess I overcooked a little bit. There's enough to feed an army. Would you care for some? Yeah. Sure. Did, uh, 
Red, you get back to sleep all right? Yeah, uh, sorry about that. Tell me a little about yourself, Elmer. Oh, not much to tell. Hi, Mom. Morning, Mandy. Want a little breakfast? Elmer cooked it. Okay. Dad! Ah. Elmer. I've made a list and a schedule. I, I think you'll find them quite comprehensive. Are you working at? Are you trying to make this a career? What? Just watching and, and waiting. You're driving an old man crazy. No, I was just checking. Checking? On what? he's got now. He's got himself a, a handyman. Rats. Now I'm gonna have to get one too. <laughs> Sam, you're a lunatic. Hey Marla, we got that Christmas Eve party coming up. You, you need a hand with anything? My mom says you're supposed to come in for lunch now. Tell her I'll be down in a minute. You still don't trust me, do you? No. Tell me, what did I ever do to you? Nothing. But you ripped off my dad. When you got me there. You know. You do. You like cookies. Mm hmm Well, uh, who do you think made these? My dad did. No, 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 no. If your dad made these cookies, you can eat every cookie that you can find in your ear. I don't have any cookies in my ear. They're not in your ear. Are they out there? No. No. Well, watch. Cookie. Yeah. Must be magic. Well, must be something.
Justin, Justin, are you there? Are you awake, Justin? Amanda, if you don't stop bugging me, I'm gonna scream. That's all you do. Justin, this Justin, what do you want this time? Justin, this is important. I think he's the one. I think Alma's the one. What are you talking about? What do you mean, he's the one? When we went to see Santa Claus, I told him I wanted a grandpa. He said he'd do his best. Now Homer's here. I've been watching him. And I think he'll make a good grandpa, but he may need a little help. Guess what's out there? Go ahead, guess. Bet you can. I don't know what. And no, I said go ahead and guess. <laughs> hey, Dad, guess what's out there on the front porch? Sam. Come on, Sam. Spit it out. A handyman. Yeah, I've hired a handyman. <laughs> oh, Dad, he needed a reference. I gave him your name. Would you come in, please? Sure, bud. It's your nickel. Okay, kids, I got this pretty well worked out. Now, what we're looking for this year is a spruce tree. Because uh, in 1980, when you were born, Justin, you got a spruce. And then we had a balsam, and then a pine. And then, Amanda, when you were born that year, we had a spruce tree, too. And we went balsam, pine, spruce, balsam, pine. So this year, we need a spruce tree. Now, it's going into the corner by the window. The ceilings there are eight feet high. The star is eight inches, and we need at least eight inch clearance. But it's not a spruce. Hey, Reg. See? I got a handyman. Oh, gee, that's great, Sam. Uh, what's he doing there? Well, he's having his coffee break. Yeah, I see. Look, uh, I gotta go. I'll catch you later. Get this, okay? Jeez, I wonder what made Sam get himself a handyman. Handyman? He doesn't look like much of a handyman to me. <laughs> yeah. Looks like you uh, you could learn a few things about being a handyman yourself. There we go. All right. All right, let's go. All right, you take the front. I got the back.
Okay, I want you to take these drums and move them onto the street. There should be a dolly around here someplace. Those got to weigh over 50 pounds. I don't have to lift them. You don't have to... I don't have to lift them. I think it's a law. An employee shouldn't be expected to lift anything over 50 pounds. Look, Liberace, these drums here got to be moved, and I hired you to move them. You okay, let her go. Ow! Couldn't find it. Couldn't find what? The dolly. Yeah. I guess he could have found me a stranger son-in-law someplace, but I don't know where. He'll be okay, Dad. You just gotta give him some time. Hey, Sam. How's it going? Okay. I guess. Yeah, uh, anyway, have you got a red handle, Robertson? Mine's gone missing. We're just uh, putting up the tree, can't get it quite straight. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Actually, I think it's yours I got. Yeah. Just a sec. No, oh, I, I just figured I really couldn't afford to be without one. He came highly recommended. Where did you find yours? Find my what? Your uh, handyman. The guy I've seen working around your place. Oh, you mean Elmer? Yeah. I didn't hire him. He's just, uh... Well, he's paying off some money he owes me, that's all. Look, would you excuse me for a minute? Uh, yeah, sure, Sam. Yeah, thanks for my screwdriver. You, you're fired. I'm what? You're fired. Done. Finished. Sacked. No longer needed. Your, your services are not required at this time. Washed up. Canned. Hey, look, bud, I booked the rest of the day here. We got to talk about severance pay. You're gone. Now. Okay, guys. I think it's time to put the store on top. Oh, I'll handle this. Uh, Justin, you go down in the basement and get the step ladder. And Amanda, you get the star. It's just at the bottom of the stairs. Hey, Elmer. Leave the poor guy alone. You've been working him like a horse. But everybody has to watch the star go on top. It's tradition. Come on, Elmer. Wake up. Ah, uh, uh, don't worry, I'm okay. Take care of that. Hey, man. It's time for revenge of the night. 
Hey, wait for me. So, how did you become so handy? Had a job or two. I've learned a little here and a little there. I wish Reg would learn a little here and a little there. Hey, look, if you want a district manager of a large metropolitan insurance company, I'm your man. That sounds real handy. Anyone for coffee? Y yes, I'd, I'd like a cup of coffee. Well, I'll take it in the living room. You guys go ahead. I'll just uh, have to clean up here. You're letting him get a little comfortable, aren't you? That's my mother. Your mother? She's... Uh, she's very, very beautiful. Yes, she was. It's coming up to 40 years ago that was taken. She died about... well, when Justin was just a baby. A photograph of your father? No. I never knew him. But I always hated him. I can tell you that. You hated your father? Why? He ran out on my mom before I was even born. Mom said it was just a couple of weeks after that picture was taken. He took it. Are you sure it wasn't the other way around? Yeah, I'm sure it wasn't the other way around. I should know something like that, shouldn't I? Christmas Eve. So? So he's always going out on his own like that, but always comes back for Christmas. Yeah, well. He'll be all right. I'm glad you liked it. Well, I had a bit of first-hand help. Yeah, well, it was very interesting. Okay, John. Merry Christmas to you, too. Thanks. Bye. Okay, Elmer. What happened last night? 
I think I'll have to be going back where I came from. There's a lot of old wrecks still waiting for me there. I can't say there hasn't been a nice experience. But what happened last night was... Have a look at this. Look at one. I know all about the homeless. Is that a picture of me? Are you okay? I'm fine. I don't know what's bothering you, but it seemed to have something to do with that picture of Reg's mom. Did you know her from somewhere? Don't, don't be ridiculous. Of course not. I've never seen her before. Okay. Guess if you want me to know, you'll tell me. Mm -hmm. If you ever want to talk about it, no sweat. I'll leave some dinner in the oven for you. Um, we're off to the Whitney's. See you when we get back, okay? Yeah, when, when you get back. When I get back. Got here. No. Oh, here, let me take your coat. You. So, you gonna give me a hand in the kitchen or what? I guess so. Okay, well then follow me. Okay. Hey, Court. Come on. Hey, Reg. How you doing? Hi, Sam. Nice tree. Oh, thanks. Hey, come on, I want to show you my new electric drill. New one? Yeah. Well, does that mean I can have mine back? Yeah, sure, if I can find it. Who's there? It's me, Dad. Can I come in? Yeah, come on in. Mm -hmm. Wow, nice outfit. <laughs> oh, here, let me help. What's so funny? Well, Dad, I was just thinking. Maybe you don't need the pillow. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, look. I've hidden the presents in the trunk of my car. I'll be back in a couple of minutes.
trying to do? Give me a heart attack. Sorry. Hey, aren't you the guy that's visiting the folks next door? Well, who do you think I was? Y you didn't think... Weren't you a fighter once? How did you know that? Archie Gilmore. You fought Al Pacheric. 53, right? <laughs> I whipped him, too. You're telling me, and you whipped me out of a good bet. <laughs> hey, you gotta come to the party. I'd like to, but I... What are you talking about? Look, it's a matter of survival. You, I can talk to. I'm not so sure about the rest of them. Look, help me out. We can talk about Al Pacheric. You talk me into it. I'll be right with you. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho! Merry Christmas, everybody! Oh, so nice to see you again. Oh, you're looking lovely. You're a nice dear. Hi. Well, hi yourself. <laughs> Are you having a nice time? I don't know. I just got here. I'm kind of bored. Will you talk to me? I think Archie must have bought the world's crummiest Santa costume. How about that one you had last year? Wasn't even red. Sort of orangey yellow. Justin, how about you help Elmer home with Amanda and get her to bed, okay? Oh, well, Mom, me and Courtney are having fun here. Well, you oh. can take Courtney with you. We can spend the night at you, yeah. okay? There we go. Well, I'm off to bed, and I think you'd better be doing the same thing. Okay, Elmer. Good night. Good night. Come on, Court. Good night, Elmer. Grandpa, my very own grandpa.
Justin, he's going. Amanda, get dressed. He's not leaving if we can help it. Come on, Court. <laughs> There he is. Let's go. Justin, I'm scared. It's okay, Amanda. Just stay close. Me and Cora will look after you. Right, Cora? Yeah. Right. Christmas, kids. Hey, what are you kids doing out on Christmas Eve? Oh, hey, you aren't scared of me, are you? So, got any money here? Hey, how about you, little cutie? Got a few bucks? Hey. A few bucks from Grandma, maybe? <laughs> hey, I'm not fooling around here. You kids gotta have some money, right? And I'm gonna get it. Come on. Come on! Hey, punk! Don't you touch those kids! them right away, then they wouldn't need to be upset. Yeah, well, I think this is a really good time for them to get upset. I'm going to get Sam. Amanda. Are you all right? I'm fine, Daddy. Are you boys okay? No problem, Dad. I want a word with you. Oh, I don't know what your game is, but you're out of here. Do you understand? Now get out of my sight. Go on, get lost. But Daddy, later, Justin. And don't you ever show yourself around here again. Do you understand? You useless old man. One day, she took me home to her family. They were horrified. They couldn't believe it. I had no clothes, no money, no name. It wasn't long after that, they, they forbid her to see me anymore. But she'd find a way to sneak out. Well, they're both okay. Hey, turn Courtney back over to Marla. 
It was acting like nothing had happened, so I didn't say much. Well, the uh, party's still going for a blast. Well, I just heard the whole story, and apparently something did happen. What? And her family found out about it. I rushed her right off to Europe and had our marriage annulled. It was not too long after that. I received a letter from her saying to me that she hoped that I understood. But I never did. I mean, understand what she wanted me to. She said she couldn't fight her old family. They were bearing down on her. Never given up on her. Then there are lawyers someplace in Europe who sent me a, a check, which I tore up, threw away. Along with the check was a note thanking me for my trouble. <laughs> my trouble. She had a baby. She had a baby boy. That was my baby. But I didn't know anything about it. I don't know how things can happen like this, but or why they happen, but our our paths seem to cross again. Those kids, those little kids that you saw tonight, were my grandchildren. Oh, they were, they were my grandchildren. And when I, when I took them back home, he, he threw me out. My own son, he, well, he didn't know that I was yeah, but he would throw me out, wouldn't even, wouldn't even let me explain. Well, I guess Mr. Reginald E. Spencer, 19 Fordham Lane, is much better off than without me. I guess they all are. Oscar? Yo. Go off and get me a taxi. I'll be down in five minutes. Where are you going? Out. It's Christmas Eve. You remember those people I told you Elmer sort of looks after? Well, it seems that he went back there to see how they were all doing. Now, Amanda saw him going. So all the kids sneaked out after him. Um, when they got down to the warehouse, they lost sight of him. And some creep tried to mock them. Now, Elmer saved them. Then he brought the kids back here, and you went nuts. What now? Mr. Reginald E. Spencer, that I've come to discuss with him matters of 
great urgency. Sure, uh, can I take your coat? No, thank you, but you may have these. Mr. Spencer, my name is Marie-Louise Jolicoeur. The reason I'm here is quite simple. I came to return those. I have no wish to be the cause of friction between you and your father. What are you talking about? Uh, my father's dead. I assure you, Mr. Spencer, that your father is very much alive and well. Your father is Elmer, a man I believe you've recently met. What are you talking about? I is this some kind of con? Reg, I believe her. There's something about Elmer. The way he looked at that picture. Let me acquaint you with these facts. Number one, your mother's family was very wealthy. Number two, they disapproved of your father. Number three, he disappeared before you were born. Number four, your mother's name was Jessica. You never mentioned your mother's name to Elmer. And number five, that photo, that is your mother. How did you know that? Because Elmer had a photo of her himself. He showed it to me. I recognized her. So you see, Mr. Spencer, if you've been the subject of a con, as you put it, that con has been at the hands of your mother's family. I, uh... <laughs> I, I can't leave him out there, Marie. I have to find him. Can you show me where this place is? I'll call you if I... when I find it. Okay. Goodbye, Marie. Goodbye, young woman. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And where is Elmer? Elmer? He said he was going to take a bit of a walk. Who's the geek? This Oscar is not a geek. This is Reginald E. Spencer. Elmer's very own long lost son. I guess now you sort of want to get a hold of him, huh? Yes. Well, you're going to need some help. Hey, you freeze ball. Listen up. that letter. Every line of it. Yes, I, I read them over and over again, and then finally I tore it up and I threw it away. But I still remembered every line of it. 
Jessica. I thought you loved me. I should have known that all along you would, you realized that someday I'd be nothing but an old man sitting on a bench in a park, talking to a picture. I didn't know anything, Elmer, except that we were young and I loved you. You loved me enough to let your family take you away from me. didn't tell me. Look, Elmer, I know what I put you through so long ago, and maybe nothing I can ever do will make up for it. But... This is my Christmas gift to you. Christmas gift? Your son, Ranch. I'm giving it back to you, Albert. Oh. He would know me from a book without a cover. What does he need with an old bag of rags like me? Maybe we should talk. About what? She used to bring me here. Your mom. I never knew why. Until now. Marie told me. Marie? That old flake's been out of it for years. Took a good time to come back to her senses. So, what happens now? Well, you did. You just keep going on the way you're going, and I'll I'll just keep going the way that I'm going. Well, just how do I do that? Can you tell me how I do that? A couple of days ago, I'd never had a father. Now, can't you just see yourself now saying to your friends, everybody I'd like you to know, my dad, the bum. Get real, Reg. Get real. I think I am real. I think Barb's concern is real. Don't you? Don't you think Amanda's and Justin's wishes are real? They both want a grandfather. How much more real can I get? All right, I'll leave. Could you tell me this? Will you please help me out on this one? What do I say to Amanda? What do I tell her?
years ago, I messed up when I let my family bully me out of having you. You messed up when you didn't come after me. You could have, you know. You could have tried. I was glad you tore up that check. But don't tear this up, Elmer. It's the only thing I can give you now. my Christmas gift to you and Reg and Amanda and Justin and Barb. Take it. Thank you. such a wondrous Christmas. Amanda got her wish, and so did everyone else. And you know what? It took not one, but two Santas to do it. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Shut up, Ralph. <laughs>